Hello and welcome to my very first tutorial. I'm sorry if this is a little... Eh, you'll see. <laughs> but let's get into the materials. The materials you need are on the screen. There might be a little difference in the cracked stone bricks, the moss bricks, or andesite, depending on how you want to texture the bridge that we are making. But I will show you how I texture it. And you're more than welcome to make any adjustments as necessary. So this is where we're going to start. The bridge itself starts out here three wide. And we're going to be putting down three of our stone brick stairs. Directly behind those, we're going to start out by placing three stone bricks. behind those upside down stone brick stairs. And then we put our three stone brick stairs on top of those, right side up of course. Behind those, three more stone bricks. Behind those, upside down stone brick stairs. On top of those, three right side up stone brick stairs. Three stone bricks again. And then we're going to hop on over to the other side. And we are going to start the process again. So three stone brick stairs, three stone bricks, three upside down stone brick stairs on top of those. Now you'll see me texture just a little bit. I will show you the texturing here in just a moment. So right side up stone brick stairs, stone bricks, upside down stone brick stairs, right side up stone brick stairs. And then we're going to take these stone bricks here. And now that we're even with the other side, we're going to go all the way across. Same thing with the other two spots. And then I'll do a little bit of texturing. The texturing on this is mostly going to be cracked stone bricks because it's above the water. It touches some grass a little bit, which is why we included a little bit of mossy stone bricks in this. And then andesite, I think, really just does something extra when you're using stone, uh, especially if you use it sparingly. You don't want to use it as your main focal piece. In my opinion, anyways, that's just how I texture with stone. So you'll see that I really needed to contemplate what was going here. I wasn't sure, but we'll give you a, that's where we ended up putting our andesite, and that's our polished andesite to be specific. So let's go ahead and show you top down. And you'll see that there's like a sprinkling of the cracked stone bricks. Only three andesite. And then we're going to add in the mossy brick right there. Or a stone brick right there. I'm sorry. And then this is where we decide where the mossy is going to go. I tend to put any mossy stone bricks or mossy cobblestone, really anything mossy, uh, for the most part, nearest where the grass is going to go. And then the one up here is going to go there because of the hanging baskets. It is touching the stones, so I would assume some moss might make its way through. So in the four corners behind the stone brick stairs, we're going to put our spruce fence posts. Those spruce fence posts are going to be a total of four high. So we're going to go ahead and get those put in here. Uh, 
and that is each corner where the fence posts are is going to go four high. And then we're going to put trapdoors on either side, just like this. We're going to put a temporary block, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six moss blocks, again on either side. We're going to flip up those trap doors. We're going to really, really box in the little flower boxes, or the hanging flower boxes anyways, as they'll be. And then on either side, we're going to do, on the edges anyways, the trap doors goes on all four sides. And then you can get on top here and just do the trap doors on the very top of the block. And then flip them down, It'll have the exact same look as though you went around in the water and did it the other way around. Just easier to manage, especially if you are going to be building this over water and don't want to deal with the water. So we're going to put down our last two spruce fence posts. Or our spruce fences, anyways. On top of those, we're going to pop on a lantern. The glow berries at the end are going to give it a nice lighting effect, but I really do like the addition of the lanterns. So now, on top of those spruce fences, we're going to do upside down stairs, and we're going to extend this out on either side by one more. So it is going to be five wide here. And we'll do that again on both sides. Everything mirrors each other for the most part, except for where the flowers and the lanterns on the fences go. So once we have those stairs on the other side, we're going to put right side up stairs on the back of them, just like that. And then right side up stairs, again on either side. We're going to take our spruce planks along the edges, side to side and fill that in. And then on the inside portion where I'm standing, you're going to go ahead and fill that in with spruce slabs. On top of that, I add some more trapdoors because I feel like it just gives an extra bit of lift to the top of this instead of making it look and feel so flat. Uh, you can also bring it up by another level of stairs. You could also do another level of slabs. I just preferred the trapdoors for the look. I thought it just brought it together. On the corners, where you have your spruce fences, Underneath the right side up stairs, we're going to do two chains and a lantern on all four spots. So this is going to be one block out from the fences. So we're going to go ahead and put our flowers down. Now I use blue orchids, pink tulips, and lily of the valley. Um, this is just personal preference because the area that I put it in on our SMP was for a friend, and this is kind of their vibe. And they wanted a fairy-esque something or other in this spot, so I just went ahead and built this bridge and used some really pretty flowers. But you can honestly use your own combination. Now this is the part where I said you can either have 8 or 36 glowberries. Um, I said that because 
if you only have a few, you can just plant them in the spots that they go in as I'm building it. So right now, uh, this one's going above the pink tulip. And then I'm using bone meal to bring them to life. Our next two are going to go above the lantern. And then on the opposite side, do the same thing. Two above the lantern. Go over two spots. Three more. Bone meal the whole deal. And now on the corner corners, again, you can just put down a glowberry and just let it grow over time down to the water. But I like to let these go all the way down to the water, as you saw at the beginning and as you'll see at the end. Um, I just feel it looks really pretty and natural. I didn't bring them all the way down here as I'm building it, um, just so you can see a difference in, in height. But I'll give you another view of it at the end, just so you can see. But yeah, this is the bridge itself, fully completed. Again, this is my very first tutorial, um, so if you have any suggestions, uh, comments, let me know. If you like the video, uh, please feel free to, you know, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Uh, but my name was Faven, and this was the Glowy Fairy Bridge. I hope you enjoyed. 